I hope you are enjoying these lectures and you are solving the daily practice problem sheet that has been given to you. So if you are thorough with the lectures that has been given on the platform and you have done the basic level solving through daily practice problem sheet, then I guess you won't have any problem in this chapter. Now chemical kinetics as we are discussing it, like this is the ninth and the last lecture of chemical kinetics. So we are basically discussing the detailed uh, analysis of this chapter. We have, we, are, we have done a lot of uh, solving as well as we have done a lot of theory on this chapter as well. So I hope like you have liked my uh, way of teaching the chapter. Okay. So if you see my approach basically is to make you solve a lot of subjective question that actually helps you in analyzing a question, reading a question and extracting data from it. Once you are through this process, then you can definitely go on to objective level solving. You can solve previous year objective papers as well, as well as you can take up any book that you are following and you can solve that. In case of any doubts, in case of any query, you can write to us in the chat box that has been given to you. Okay. So let's continue with today's lecture. So today we are going to discuss a very important reaction that is parallel and sequential reactions. And we are going to study the kinetics of it. Now parallel and sequential reactions are not mentioned in the JE syllabus. They are not actually in the JE syllabus. But if you look at this two reactions, they actually cover a very good concept and they will help you in understanding of the chapter in a much effective manner. Parallel reactions you will often see in nuclear chemistry or when you do the atomic physics that is there in the radioactivity as well. So parallel reactions we are going to indirectly use in radioactivity but sequential reactions we are not going to study much about in JE portion but I am going to cover it in detail. Lot many questions have been asked on parallel and sequential reactions in Olympiad as well. Okay. So looking forward for a complete holistic solution on this chapter. So we are going to cover this in detail now. Okay. So let us visit the concepts that we have done till now. Okay. So we basically started with the first lecture was basically telling us about what is rate. Okay. How do we define rate? What kind of rates are there instantaneous and uh, average rate? And then we went on to uh, discuss about the Goldberg, uh, Goldberg and wage, uh, wage uh, rate law. There we discussed how do we write the different rate laws and then we jumped on to the order of reaction and molecularity. Now from order of reaction we build the basic concepts and we derived a integrated rate law for a zero order reaction. We did some example of zero order reaction and we have solved some objective as well as subjective questions through DPP and through class examples for zero order first reaction. Then we entered into the first order kinetics. First order kinetics is very important because most of the question in JE are based on first order kinetics. So we derived a integrated rate law. Then we went on to solve some of the beautifully crafted questions on it. And then we discussed direct and indirect way of uh, determining the rate of a reaction. Okay. So where we studied about titrating the reaction mixture like in the case of decomposition of H2O2 we did by measuring the optical rotation, we also talked about pseudo first order reactions. Okay, So that was basically the detailed of the first order reaction and then we did a very important concept that is gaseous first order reaction. So all this of basically comprised of first order reaction. Then we studied about the complex reaction, how do we write the molecularity and how do we derive the rate law using the steady state approximation and also not using steady state approximation because steady state approximation you don't have to use at your 12th level but its knowledge will obviously help you in explaining the questions in a much better manner. And then we entered into the dependence of temperature on the rate constant and we derived the Arrhenius law then we studied the collision theory. So we covered the entire segment of chemical kinetics. So this lecture is basically going to enhance your skill. It is going to give you a much more uh, detailed analysis of parallel and sequential reaction. Okay, so let's start with the first concept that is basically a parallel reaction. Okay, I hope you are having a copy and a pen along with you and you are also writing it along with the concepts that are being explained over here. Okay, so I have already tell, told you that there are two kinds of reaction. Okay, suppose this is 
one such type where A is reacting to form B and A is also reacting to form C simultaneously but with a different rate constant. So, these reactions are called as parallel reactions. Okay? So, basically A is forming B and A is forming C, but both are formed at a different rate. Now, this reaction is different from this reaction. Okay? This is basically one mole of A is reacting to give one mole of B and one mole of C. So, this is basically B and C are formed with the same rate constant. Okay? So, in this reaction, if suppose we start with 10 moles of this and suppose after say time, some time T, some moles of this and some moles of this would be formed. Now, depending upon this value of rate constant, which reaction is faster and which is slower, we can get the moles of B and C and they will be different. Okay? They can be same, but mostly they are different. But when a reaction is proceeding something like this, where a single reactant is changing into two product, so the moles of this formed after time t, the moles of B and C will always be same. Because the rate constant or the speed with which the product B and C is formed is same. But the speed in which B and C is formed is different because their rate constants are different. So, we are basically going to focus on this parallel reaction. Okay? So, before entering into this, we will assume that both the parallel reactions are first order. Okay? Both are first order. So, basically it is a first order reaction. A changing into B is a first order reaction and A changing into C is also a first order reaction where K1 is the rate constant for the formation of B and K2 is the rate constant of formation of C from A. Now, suppose if K1 is much greater than K2, if K1 is much greater than K2, then what we can say? K1 is much greater than K2, that means A would react more spontaneously to give B because its rate constant is higher. So, more amount of A would be converted into B and very small amount of A would get converted into C. If K2 is much greater than K1, then we will say that reaction A going into C is much faster than reaction A going into B. So, basically reactant A would convert more into B and less into C. So, the amount of C will get at the end would be much more than that of B. But if we were considering a normal reaction where A was changing into B plus C, so basically if the rate constant of that reaction is higher, B and C still will be formed in equal moles only because that is a single reaction in which one mole of A is giving one mole of B and one mole of C. So I hope this point is clear to everyone. So basically we are assuming here that A changing into B is following a first order kinetics and A changing into C is also Okay, it's also following the first order kinetics. So now let us look at A. So we can say that if we look at the first reaction A changing into B. So we'll say that the rate of disappearance that is minus dA by dt. Okay, this will also be overall rate because the stoichiometry is one. So we have already divided with the stoichiometry. So if we consider only for first reaction that is A changing into B. So this will be equal to K1 into concentration of A. Okay, so, it, we are considering only the reaction where A is changing into B with a rate constant of K1. Now, similarly, A is also reacting and forming, okay, A is also reacting and forming C. So, I can write for the second reaction the differential rate law as minus dA by dt equals to K into concentration of A. Okay. So, A is basically reacting through both the mechanisms. It is transforming into B as well as it is transforming into C. So, I can say that the overall rate of disappearance of A should be equal to K1 plus K2 into concentration of A. Okay, I hope this is clear to everyone. So, this equation we can write because A is reacting through both the mechanisms. Okay, so, A is getting converted into B with a rate constant of K1 and A is simultaneously getting converted into C with a rate constant of K2. So, overall rate we can write as minus dA by dt equals to K1 plus K2 into A. Okay? So, now let us integrate this equation. So, we can write this as, okay, so let me just 
write this something like this minus d a upon a should be equal to k d t k 1 plus k 2 into d t ok. So, I can write this as d a equals to minus k 1 plus k 2 into d t ok. So, k 1 and k 2 are like independent of time. So, at time t is equal to 0, let us assume that the concentration of A was A naught. After time t, the concentration of A was A t, ok. So, we can write this as, we know that the integration of d A by A is ln A. So, I am just writing it over here. So, I can write this step as ln, ok, ln A, upper limit is a t. So, ln a t minus ln a naught will be equal to k 1 plus k 2 into t. So, this is the basic integration that I am carrying out. So, I can write this as ln with a minus sign ok obviously ln a t upon a naught is equal to minus k 1 plus k 2 into t ok. So, there is a minus sign over here. So, I can write if I remove the ln I take anti log. So, I can write a t upon concentration of a naught as e raised to power minus k 1 plus k 2 into t. So, I can write a t as a naught into e raised to power minus k 1 plus k 2 into t ok. So, I can write this as the expression ok. So, basically because it is a first order reaction. So, I can say that we know in a first order reaction a t is always equal to a naught into e raised to a minus k t. Now, because a has react simultaneously into two products ok. So, the overall rate constant for would become k 1 plus k 2 because a is reacting through two mechanisms simultaneously. So, basically if you look at a first order equation it was a t equals to a naught into e ratio minus k t. Now, instead of k because we have to take the overall rate constant. So, the overall rate constant in this case would become k 1 plus k 2. So, I will write that overall rate constant is k 1 plus k 2 ok. So, I hope this is clear to everyone. You can write down this quickly. So, if we want to derive the half life time period ok. So, I will derive half life time period as well. So, I will say that at half life time period what happens is the concentration of A t is half ok. Half life time period is the time when the concentration of A has reduced to half its original concentration. So, original concentration was A naught. So, A t would become A naught ok. So, when you find the t half so, this would come out to be 0 0.693 upon k 1 plus k 2 ok. So, this is the similar way which we have done in the first order kinetics ok. So, just we have to put everything is the same only instead of rate constant k it has come as k 1 plus k 2 ok. So, I will write the half life time period. will be written as t half will be 0 0.693 upon overall rate constant that was k 1 plus k 2 ok. So, this can be easily memorized like even if you do not want to derive it you can memorize it very easily ok because it is a first order reaction. We know that in a first order reaction t half is 0 0.693 upon k. Now, because a has reacted simultaneously in two different pathways, so overall rate constant would be k 1 plus k 2 because through both these steps it is getting consumed. So, these two expressions ok, I can remember and then also I can say that a t was equal to a naught into e raised to a minus k 1 plus k 2 into t ok. So, just write it down, I will derive the now, we have to derive the concentration of B after time T and concentration of C after time T. Okay, so, I hope you have written this now. So, let me just erase this portion so that 
if someone has not copied it till now they can copy it okay so what we are going to do is we are we have derived the concentration of a after time t now we are going to derive the concentration of b after time t okay the concentration of b and the concentration of c after time t okay so basically we have to form a differential equation okay and then we are going to solve it and we are going to get the final concentration so basically we are going to find the concentration of b and c okay at time t okay so this is what we are going to derive now so i can also say that looking at the reaction because this is the first order with respect to b so i can also write this as db by dt equals to k1 into concentration of a okay i have already taught you this in the first lecture we can write the overall rate for only a changing into b as minus da by dt equals to db by dt equals to k1 into concentration of a raised to power 1 we have assumed that the reactions are first order so i can clearly write this okay now instead of a because this would be the concentration of a at time t so i can write this as we have already derived a as a not into e raised to power minus k1 plus k2 into t okay so k1 and a not are constant a not is a fixed quantity we started with the initial concentration so if you look at the expression this becomes db will be equal to k1 a not into e raised to power minus k1 plus k2 into t dt okay so when time t is equals to 0 okay so when time t is equals to 0 we know that at that time b is not formed because only a would be there so the concentration of b would be zero after say some time t when the reaction has like reaction has achieved some time t and some a has reacted the concentration of b formed is say b okay so if you integrate db you will get b okay so upper limit is b lower limit is zero so this is basically b minus zero that is again b only so i can write this as b equals to k1 into concentration of a not now if i integrate e raised to power minus k k1 plus k2 into t okay so i will get e raised to power minus k1 plus k2 t okay lower limit being 0 upper limit being t divided by minus k1 plus k2 okay so this is basically integration of e raised to power ax is e raised to power ax upon a so basically this entire quantity minus k1 plus k2 is a so this will come in the denominator so if you put the upper limit and the lower limit so basically it will become e raised to power minus k1 plus k2 into t minus if you put the lower limit e raised to power minus 0 okay so that will be basically 1 okay so b i can write as k1 into a not okay so i am just writing this as putting the upper limit as t and the lower limit as 0 will get minus 1 so this is minus k1 plus k2 so i am just absorbing this negative side negative sign there so this minus 1 will become plus 1 so i will be having k1 upon a not divided by k1 plus k2 into 1 raised to power e raised to power minus k1 plus k2 into t okay so this is the concentration of b which we are going to get after time t okay so just you have to remember this expression okay so b is basically k1 into a naught divided by k1 plus k naught k1 plus k2 into 1 minus e raised to power minus k1 plus k2 into t okay so let me just do some basic rearrangement in this so that we can simplify this expression so that can it can be remembered very easily okay the way we are deriving b in the same way we can also derive c 
okay so in the same way we will also derive c so i hope you have written this okay so this is little mathematical so the knowledge of integration is required over here integration i hope everyone is well versed with integration now so i can write this expression as b as i can write this as k1 upon k1 plus k2 okay so i will just take this a not inside the bracket so i can write this as a not minus a not into e raised to power minus k1 plus k2 into t okay so i'm going to write this so we know that okay so when we take a not inside so this is a not minus a not into e raised to power minus k1 plus k2 into t we know that at is a not into e raised to power minus k1 plus k2 into t so we'll just put it over there instead of a not into e raised to power minus k1 plus k2 into t so basically this is a not that is the initial amount or the initial concentration and at is the final concentration so a not minus at is the amount of a reacted so i can write b as k1 upon k1 plus k2 into amount of a reacted okay so i hope this expression is clear to everyone so this is the expression for b so b will be basically the k1 upon k1 plus k2 into amount of a reacted similarly we can also derive for the concentration of c i can write this because this is again a first order reaction so i will say that minus da by dt is equals to dc by dt equals to kt into a raised to power 1 first order reaction so i can simply write dc by dt as k2 into concentration of a so in the similar way which we have done for finding the concentration of b we'll do the similar thing with c as well so i am going to write a2 as a as a not into e raised to power minus k1 plus k2 into t okay so exactly this is the same so when you integrate we'll get the similar expression only instead of k2 k1 you will be getting k2 okay you can see over here everything is same so basically the rate constant is k2 so we'll get k2 in the numerator so this will be basically k2 upon k1 plus k2 into a not minus a not into e raised to minus k1 plus k2 into t so that is also a not minus at which will be amount of a reacted okay so basically you have to remember this formula that's it if you remember this formula you are going to solve all the questions based on parallel reactions so basically we are looking into these two expression one is the concentration of b okay so one is concentration of b and the other is concentration of c okay so just you can note it over here i'm just highlighting this so that you are able to write it clearly so this is basically the concentration of b and this is basically the concentration of c okay so directly i can write the overall conclusion that the amount of b will be equal to k1 upon k1 plus k2 into amount of a reacted okay you can derive it you can solve it by your own also this is actually a very easy mathematical calculation the amount of c would be k2 upon k1 plus k2 into amount of b reacted okay so if you take the ratio of the two you can clearly see that concentration of b upon concentration of c will always be equal to this amount of a amount of a reacted will get cancel out okay so amount of a reacted would get cancel out k1 plus k2 would get cancel out so we'll be led with k1 upon k2 so we'll say that when the reaction has happened for time t the ratio of concentration of b upon c will be equal to the ratio of their rate constants okay so this is the exact derivation okay you can just write it down quickly i will show you some question solving on this as well
okay so the ratio of the concentration of b and c will always be equal to the ratio of their equilibrium constant sorry ratio of their rate constant so the ratio of their concentration of b upon c is always equal to the ratio of the rate constant okay that is k1 upon k2 in this case so if you remember these few properties will be able to solve all the questions on parallel reactions okay so i hope you have copied this or you have taken a snapshot so basically this is dealing with raw integration so i think you can remember this okay so let me take you to a question so that i will be able to demonstrate whatever i have done till now so suppose we are having say a reactant a it is changing into b and a reactant a is also changing into c we have been given that the rate constant of a changing into b is k1 and that of a changing into c is k2 now it is given that say k1 upon k2 is say 2 okay so this is given k1 upon k2 is 2 so this is saying that starting with 10 moles of a okay 10 moles of a find the moles of b and c after t half okay so we have not been given anything just we have been said that we have to find the number of moles of b and c after t half that means after half life time period so we know that at half life time period what would happen half of the a would react okay so we have taken number of moles of a as 10 so we'll say that the number of moles of a reacted would be at t half okay we know that half has reacted so the number of moles reacted is 5 leftover moles of a would be 5 okay so we know that the amount of c formed would be we can directly say that this is k1 upon k1 plus k2 into amount of a reacted okay just i am using the formula that we have derived okay so i can write this as just i am dividing by k1 so this will become 1 plus k2 by k1 okay just i am writing this expression as this okay so this is basically the same expression amount of a reacted is 5 so we know that k1 by k2 is 2 so k2 by k1 will be half so basically we are having 1 plus half into 5 so i will say that this is 2 3 so basically this is 2 by 3 into 5 so 10 by 3 moles of b would be formed after t half okay so this is how you can sorry this is amount of b formed okay so this is amount of b formed now similarly for amount of c formed we know that the expression would be because the rate constant is k2 so this will be k2 upon k1 plus k2 into amount of a reacted a initially was 10 at half life 50 percent of a has reacted that means 5 moles has reacted so we'll just take it as 5 so i can rearrange this expression and write this as k1 upon k2 plus 1 okay this is the same thing only we have divided it with k2 denominator and numerator so this is basically 2 so 2 plus 1 okay into 5 so the amount of b would be 5 by 3 amount of c in this case would be 5 by 3 okay and the amount of b is 10 by 3 so if you take the ratio of b upon c you can clearly see that this is 10 by 3 and this is 5 by 3 so this will be 2 which is also the ratio of their rate constant okay so this is the way of finding the final concentration of b and c okay you can write this down so this is a straightforward application of parallel reaction okay now let me just modify this a little bit okay so i hope you have written this now so let me modify this little bit so suppose i am changing the reaction as a changing into say 2b okay the rate constant is k1 and a changing into say 3c rate constant is k2 okay now how will the expression change okay so i know that a is reacting simultaneously 
via two mechanism and it is converting into B and C. So, I will say that the rate constant for conversion of A to B is K1 and A to C is K2. So, because A is reacting via two mechanism, so its overall rate constant would be K1 plus K2. So, the same thing would persist over here. We can write the expression as minus dA by dt equals to K1 into concentration of okay, into is equals to K1 plus K2 into concentration of A okay, because this is reacting through two mechanism because the stoichiometry is one. So, we are just having one and order we have already said that it is one with respect to A. So, I can write A as A naught into E raised power minus K1 plus K2 into T. Okay, I hope this expression is clear to you. Now, when we are writing for the expression in terms of rate of production of B. So, I will write this as dB by dt. Okay, I will say that for the first reaction, the overall rate is minus dA by dt equals to 1 by 2 dB by dt. Okay, because its stoichiometry is 2, this will be equal to A into concentration, K1 into concentration of A. So, I will write dB by dt divide by its stoichiometry, this will become the rate. Okay, this will be equal to K1 into concentration of A. So, d B by dt would be 2 K1 into A. Okay. So, if you write the expression, so this will become dB by dt equals to 2 K1 into A naught into E raised to power minus K1 plus K2 into T. Okay. So, overall this is constant. Okay. So, when you just derive this, so instead of K1 that was coming in the initial expression, okay, instead of K1 that was coming in the initial expression, now this has changed into 2k1. So, basically we will get a 2k1 term over here. So, I will get 2k1 upon k1 plus k2 into amount of A reacted. Okay? So, this is just the basic change in stoichiometry. So, this is the amount of B. Similarly, when you write the rate equation for C, I can say that dc by dt will be equal to, okay? so this is the stoichiometry is 3. So, this is 1 by 3. So, this will be equal to K2 into concentration of A. So, if you write dc by dt, so this will be 3 into K2. A we know after time is A0 into E raised to minus K1 plus K2 into T. So, instead of K2, right, instead of K2, now we are getting a term of 3K2. So, when you integrate, this is a constant. So, this will persist in the final expression. So, we will get at 3K2 upon K1 plus K2 into amount of A reacted. Okay? So, just you have to keep this in mind and you will get the expression. Okay? So, when you divide B upon C, so the concentration of B upon C would be 2K1 upon 3K2. Okay? So, this is a very important expression. Okay? So, when they are in the stoichiometric ratio, so what we are saying, B concentration of B upon concentration of C is equal to the ratio of the rate constant into the ratio of their stoichiometry. So, I can directly write this. So, the concentration of B upon C is the rate constants ratio K1 upon K2 into stoichiometry of B divided by stoichiometry of A. In case it is 1, 1, so there is only ratio of K1 upon K2, but if there are some stoichiometry coefficient, then you can write this. Okay? So, I hope this is clear to everyone. Okay, now, suppose in the same reaction, we had started with the, say, at time t is equal to 0, we had number of moles of A as, say, 10. Okay? It could ask us, find number of moles of B and C when 75 percent of the reaction is over. Okay? Now, when 75 percent of the reaction is over means that 75 percent of A has reacted. Okay? So, we initially started with 10 moles, 75 reaction is over. It means that amount of A reacted is 
75 percent of 10. So, basically 7.5 moles of A has reacted. So, the concentration of A after time T would be initially it was 10, 7.5 has reacted. So, it will be left with 2.5. The amount of B formed would be clearly we can say that it is 2 K1 upon 2 K1 plus sorry 2 K1 upon K1 plus K2 into amount of A reacted that is 2.5 ok. So, if suppose again same data was given to us K1 upon K2 is 2. So, I will just write this as B is equals to 2 upon 1 plus K2 by K1 into 5 by 2 ok. So, I can say that K2 by K1 is half. So, B in this case would become 2 divided by 1 plus half into 5 by 2. So, we can solve over here. Similarly, for C we can write that the amount of C would be 3 K2 upon K1 plus K2 into amount of A reacted that is 2 that is 7.5 ok. So, amount of A reacted is 7.5. So, this is basically 15 by 2 ok. Ok, so I hope this is clear to everyone. So, this is again a basic application of what we have done. Just write it quickly now. Okay, so, these are not tough level questions if you know the right mathematics involved. So, this is actually very simple and mathematical derivation of a very important expression that we are going to use everywhere. Okay, so, I hope you have written this now. Now, let us take another question. Now, let us take a reaction in which suppose we are having a gas. Okay, it is changing into say B gas. Okay, the rate constant over here is K1 it is changing into C gas at a rate constant K2 and simultaneously it is also changing into another gas D ok. So, basically three reactions are happening simultaneously where A is changing into B, A is changing into C and A is changing into D ok. K1 is given to us as 2 into 10 H to minus 3 second ok. Suppose K2 is given to us as 3 into 10 H to minus 3 second ok and K3 suppose is given to us as 1.93 into 10 H to minus 3 ok. Now, the question says that starting with partial pressure of A as say 10 atm ok find the total pressure after 100 second ok. So, we can just calculate this now. So, take the value of P A as 8 atm ok. So, this is the question basically. So, we have been given that A is reacting via three mechanisms changing into B gas, C gas and D gas simultaneously with respective rate constant and we have been asked that we suppose start the reaction with only A whose partial pressure is 8 atm we have to find the total pressure after 100 second ok. So, basically what we are doing now we are having three reactions taking place simultaneously. So, in this case again I will just use my logic the derivation logic which we use in the earlier problem. So, I can say that because A is reacting through three mechanisms. So, its overall rate constant would be K1 plus K2 plus K3 because it is disappearing via all the three reactions A is reactant in all the three reactions. So, the overall rate constant would be K1 plus K2 plus K3. So, I can derive A t as A naught into E raise to power minus K1 plus K2 plus K3 into T ok. So, T half for this would become 0 0.693 upon K1 plus K2 plus K3 ok. So, in this we need to know what exactly is happening at 100 second, how much amount of A has reacted because we do not know any other data. We just know that the amount of B formed would be K1 upon now because there are three reactions. So, K1 plus K2 plus K3 into amount of A reacted ok. Similarly, the concentration of C would be K1 upon K1 plus K2 plus K3 ok into 
amount of A reacted and similarly for D we can write K1 upon K1 plus K2 plus K3 into amount of A reacted. Okay, so I hope this expression you are clear now okay, because there are three reactions. So basically this will be K1 upon K1 plus K2 plus K3 divided into amount of A reacted. So that will be the amount of B formed. So from the above K1, K2, K3 data I could easily say that if I am adding all them I am getting 6.93 okay, 2 plus 3 plus 1.93. So overall rate constant in this case is 6.93 into 10 is to minus 3. So I can easily make out from this that if we are going to divide T half or 0 0.693 with K1 plus K2 plus K3, I am going to get 100 second. Okay, so this I am very clear about. Okay, so T half is 100 second. So at 100 second, what is happening? 50 percent of A is reacting. So the initial pressure of A was 8 atm. So 50 percent reacted. So the leftover A will exert. 4 atm pressure because 50 percent has reacted to find the partial pressure of B we would do K1 upon K1 plus K2 plus K3. So this is basically 2 upon 6.93 okay 10 is to minus 3 factor would get cancelled out. So amount of A reacted is 4 atm because at half life time period half of A would have reacted. So half pressure of would have reacted. So if you want to find in terms of pressure I can write this. Okay, so you can calculate this. Similarly, for C, I can say that this would be K2 upon K1 plus K2 plus K3, 10 raised to minus 3 factor will get cancelled out into the pressure of A that has reacted. And similarly, for partial pressure of D, I can say that it will be 1.93 upon 6.93 into 4. Okay, so this way you will get the partial pressure of A, B, and C. Okay, just have a look at this. So, just we have Instead of two reactions, there are now three reactions that, can, that are taking place simultaneously. Okay, so I hope this expression is clear to you how we are doing this. So you have to just have a conclusion. You do not have to go for the derivation. If you have derived ones, you need to establish a right conclusion inside your head. So basically, the amount of B formed is always the rate constant through which it is formed divided by the overall rate constant that is K1 plus K2 if there are 3 reaction K1 plus K2 plus K3 4 reaction K1 plus K2 plus K3 plus K4 into amount of A reacted okay into amount of A reacted into what we are saying we have to if there is a stoichiometry involved over here there was 2 over here so into stoichiometry as well okay so you just have to take care of the stoichiometry because here is the like a silly mistake that we often carry out because the half db by dt will be equal to k1 into a so instead of k1 in the numerator it will be 2k1 okay so amount of b font would be stoichiometry of b into k1 divided by k1 plus k2 plus k3 into amount of a reacted similarly amount of b formed or the pressure of c formed will be stoichiometry of c into the rate constant okay divided by the sum of all the rate constant or overall rate constant into amount of A reacted. Similarly, for D we can say that this will be K3 into the stoichiometry of D. Okay, In case of 1, there is no issue. In case there is any number, so it will become 2K3, 3K3. Divide by overall rate constant that is K1 plus K2 plus K3 into amount of A reacted. Okay, So I hope this is clear to everyone. So in this case, we will also say that the ratio of B by C, concentration of B by C is K1 by K2. Okay, the ratio in which the two product are formed will always be the ratio of the rate constant which we have proved. Okay, similarly, the amount of C and ratio of amount of C and D would be the ratio of their rate constant and similarly, the concentration ratio of B by D would also be K1 upon K3. Okay, so if you want to do a shortcut if a question comes on this. Uh, depending upon the ratio, you can also predict the option. Okay, so I hope this is clear to everyone, and you are facing no doubts till now. So basically, we have derived okay for a parallel reaction. 
okay, the kinetics, the concentration of A, B and C after time T for a parallel reaction. Okay. Now, let us go into another very important reaction which is called as sequential reaction. Okay. Now, what are sequential reactions? Sequential reaction is basically reaction in which a reactant reacts and a product form and that product again sequentially reacts to give another product. Okay, so, that is basically called as a sequential reaction. That is all the reactions are happening in a sequence. Okay, so, suppose we are having a reaction A, this is changing into B. Okay, suppose the rate constant of this is K1. Okay, now, B is suppose changing into C. Okay, so, this is K2. Okay, so, this is a rate constant K1 and rate constant K2. So, what is happening? A reactant A is changing into B with a rate constant of K1. As soon as B is formed, it is reacting with a different rate constant and changing into C. So, this is basically a sequential reaction. Okay, so, we will assume that all the steps over here is first order. That is A changing into B is first order, B changing into C is also first order. So, this is basically a first order sequential reaction. Okay. So, it is something like a reactant is reacting okay, and it is forming an intermediate and then that intermediate after some time is reacting back, reacting again and giving rise to the product. So, that is basically a sequential reaction. So, we will first derive the expression for the concentration of A, B and C and we will understand that what exactly is happening in this reaction. So, if we look at a, okay, A changing into B. So, basically I will say that minus dA by dt is equal to K1 into A. Okay, so, this is obvious now. This is the first order reaction. So, if you just integrate this similar to the first order expression that we are deriving every time. So, A t will be equal to A naught into E raised power minus K1 into t. Okay, so, this will be the final concentration of a. Okay. Now, let us look at the expression of B. Okay. So, if we say that, if we look at this, so we are saying that B is getting formed from the first reaction, A is transforming into B and then B is again consumed by the second reaction which is in which it is changing into C. So, I will write that dB by dt will be equal to okay, K1 into concentration of A because this is the product, right? A is changing into B, so B is the product. So, I will write dB by dt as K1 into concentration of A because this reaction is first order. Okay? Now, then B is changing into C simultaneously. As B is formed, it is getting changed into C simultaneously. So, it is reacting. So, I will write this as minus K2 into concentration of B. Okay? So, this is what we were doing in steady state approximation, writing the rate expression. So, I am saying that dB by dt that is rate of formation of B would be K1 into concentration of A minus because it is reacting again in the forward direction as well. So, minus K2 into concentration of B. So, if you look at this, so we have to use some mathematical tool to solve this differential equation. I can write K1 as A as A0 into E raised to power minus K1 into T. Okay, I will just take I can write this as K2 into B. So, for just deriving the integrated draw, we will what we will do, we will multiply the entire equation with E raised to power K2 T. Now, why we are doing this? Just I will explain now. So, if you multiply this with E raised to power K2 T, so this will be E raised to power K2 T into dB by dt equals to K1 into A0 E raised to power K2 t into E raised power minus K1 t minus K2 into E raised power K2 t into B. Okay? So, just take this expression over here. So, I can write this as E raised to power K2 t into dB by dt plus K2 into E raised to power K2 t into B. This will be equal to K1 into A0 
e raised to power k2 minus k1 into t okay so just look at this expression okay look at the take a look at the left hand side expression okay so you can see that we can simplify this as okay d into e raised to power k2 t into concentration of b okay so if you differentiate this with respect to time okay if you differentiate e raised to power k2 t into concentration of b with respect to time what i will get i will first keep e raised to power k2 t as constant so on differentiating this i will get this is taken as constant so i will get e raised to power k2 t into db by dt okay now what i am going to do i am going to take b as the constant so b will come out and i will differentiate e raised to power k2 t okay so when i differentiate e raised to power k2 t in with respect to t so k2 will come out e raised to power k2 t will also come out okay so this we will get so this is basically the left hand side so i can replace this entire thing with okay just i am writing it over here so this is little uh, big derivation so i can write this as d by dt into e raised to power k2 t into b is equals to k1 a not e raised to power k2 minus k1 into t okay so i hope this is clear to you now just write it down so that i can erase and resolve it so if you take the dt term over there so i will get d e raised to power e2 t into concentration of b equals to k1 into a not e raised to power k2 minus k1 t dt okay so when you integrate this at time t is equals to 0 concentration of b is 0 at time t the concentration of b is b so this is basically b into e raised to power k2 t okay so i'm just going to use the integration laws and i'm directly going to write the expression so when you integrate e raised to power k2 minus k1 into t so we'll get e raised to power ax integration is e raised to power x upon a so i will get this as k1 a not k2 minus k1 okay so if you put the upper limit that is t so this will be e raised to power k2 minus k1 t minus if you keep the lower limit 0 if t is 0 then e raised to power 0 is 1 so i can write this as this okay so just take e raised to power k2 t over there so we'll get b as k1 upon k1 plus k2 into a not okay so if i divide this with e raised to power k2 t so we'll be left with e raised to power minus k1 t okay minus e raised to power minus k2 t okay so i hope you are getting this expression now okay so this is the final concentration of b okay so this is little tds process of doing the calculation so i am saying that the concentration of b after time t would be k1 upon k2 minus k1 okay i have written plus over there i think so this is plus not this is a minus okay so this is minus over here so this is basically k2 minus k1 okay so if i write this so this will be basically k1 upon k2 minus k1 into a not into e raised to power minus k1 t minus e raised to power minus k2 t okay so this is the expression of concentration of b okay i hope you are able to understand what we are doing over here okay so this is how you go on to calculate the concentration of b 
okay so this is a little tedious process of doing integration it is basically we are using the integration and the mathematical tool to explain the sequential reaction now if we want to calculate the concentration of c okay so basically i can say that okay i will say that the i can write the concentration of c as a not minus a minus concentration of b okay so we are basically the conserving the mass over here so also you can do its integration okay if you don't want to do it this way better is do the integration okay so i will say that dc by dt is equal to k2 into concentration of b okay so the val the concentration of b was this okay so in the next step i will write okay you you can write this now so this is basically dc equal to k2 into the concentration of b was k1 upon k2 minus k1 okay into a not into e raised to power minus k2 k1 t minus e raised to power minus k2 t dt okay so we can just integrate from time t is equals to 0 c was 0 to time t when concentration was c o c so you can just get this okay so you can derive for c as well okay so i leave it this for your homework to do the integration okay so this is how you can calculate the concentration of a b and c okay so just write it down okay so finally if you do the necessary integration the concentration of c will get as k1 into k2 divided by k2 minus k1 into concentration of a not okay into 1 minus e raised to a minus k1 t divided by k1 minus okay so just i am going to delete this now minus 1 raised to a minus e raised to a minus k2 t upon k2 okay so these are the very tedious expressions okay you can get a direct question on i and c h o to derive these okay so a sure short questions on olympiad if you are focusing for chemistry olympiad now this will be going to be very helpful a physical chemistry question generally comes on chemical kinetics steady state approximation parallel sequential reaction or photochemistry reactions okay so if you see the incho paper in physical chemistry three or four chapters are there which has to be done in detail one is chemical kinetics other is the equilibrium third is the thermodynamics and fourth is like electrochemistry and solid state is also coming like so these three or four chapters you are you can bet on these chapter that they will definitely come in i and ch level okay so we have derived the concentration of a the concentration of b and concentration of c so let us do a plotting let us draw the graph okay so if we draw the graph okay if we look at the concentration versus concentration versus time graph so basically we will always plot time over here okay so if you plot concentration versus time graph then we'll say that the concentration of a is decreasing exponentially so i can like draw it something like this so this would be the concentration of a now you can see that initially what is happening b is getting formed okay b is getting formed and after some time b will start reacting and change into c so what would happen there would be accumulation of b okay so suppose if k2 if k1 is much greater than k2 so what would happen the rate in which b is formed which will be, will be much more in which it is reacted so if k1 is suppose greater than k2 so i will say that b will be formed and its reactivity or its decomposition into c would be slow so basically it would lead to a build up of b so if you look at the graph so b will basically be something like this okay so this will be the graph of concentration of b when k1 is much greater than k2 so 
it will attain a maxima in concentration after that it will start reacting and forming C and for C we can clearly say that C will increase exponentially so the concentration of C is something like this I'm just plot it with a dotted line so that you don't get confused so this will be the concentration graph of C okay so I hope this is clear to everyone So this dotted line is the concentration of C, okay. So when K1 is much greater than K2, then what would happen? B would start accumulating because the rate in which B is formed is much higher than that in which it is reacted. So B will start accumulating, okay, and after some time it will start decomposing at a slower rate. So it will have a maxima in the B. If suppose K2 is very much greater than K1. That means as soon as B is formed, it is getting reacted, okay. So if K2 is very much greater than K1, it means that as soon as B is formed, it will get reacted. So there won't be a maxima, so it, this curve would basically start and then start getting dissociated. So this will start, like this will just start B and it will like uh, approach the X axis, okay. So it will just take up, okay, just the concentration of B is building up and soon it is reacting. So there is going to be no clear maxima. So basically the curve is going to be, mostly I can say it is going to be broad. So it will be something like this. So B starts and it gets dissociated into C because K2 is very much high. So we won't be able to isolate much of a B. So there won't be a clear maxima. Okay, and C would be forming at a very sharp or very fast rate. Okay. So this is what I wanted to discuss. Now because we know that there is a maxima, okay. So a question can come, find the time when the concentration of B is maximum, okay. I hope you are understanding this. I know this, these are little theoretical boring stuff but difficult also. So we need to be very focused on what we are doing. So we are saying that if K1 is much greater than K2, then the rate of formation of K1 is higher and rate of dissociating into B is very small. So what would happen? B would start accumulating and we will get a maxima. But if K2 is very much greater than K1, that means as soon as B is formed, it will immediately dissociate into C. So the graph would be basically a broad one. We won't get any maxima over there. So find the time when the concentration of B is maximum. So we know that the concentration of B is maximum when its derivative is 0 with respect to time, okay. So if you, if we write the expression of B, we know that B is K1 upon K2 minus K1 into A0 into E raised to minus K1 T minus E raised to minus K2 T, okay. So this was the expression, okay. So when you differentiate this, we know this is a constant. So this is K2 into A upon K2 minus K1, so this is basically K2 minus K1, okay, so if you differentiate this, this would come out to be minus K1 into E raised to a minus K1 into T, this minus and minus would become plus, so plus k2 into e raised to minus k2 into t, this is equal to 0. We know that all these terms are constant, so they cannot be 0. So basically this term in the bracket has to be 0. So I can say that when this is 0, I will say that k1 into e raised to minus k1 t is equal to k2 into e raised to minus k2 into t, okay. So I can write this as k2 by k1 will be equal to e raised to a minus k1 t divided by e raised to a minus k2 t. So I can write this as e raised to a k2 minus k1 into t equals to k2 upon k1, okay. So if you take log, so I can write this as ln k2 by k1, okay this will be equal to
k2 टू माइनस के वन इंटू टी ओके सो आई कैन राइट t मैक्स एस सो दिस इज द टाइम वेन b वुड बी अटेनिंग मैक्सिमा सो दैट इज वन अपॉन के टू माइनस के वन इंटू लॉन ऑफ के टू बाई के वन ओके दिस इज जस्ट एक्सप्रेशन मैथमेटिकल एक्सप्रेशन सो दिस कैन नॉट कम इन जेई बट दिस इज इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर योर एडवांस लेवल ओके सो दिस इज द टाइम वेन बी अचीव मैक्सिमा सो बेसिकली आई विल से दैट because b is formed as a intermediate so it will achieve a maxima and then it will start decreasing because it is reacting in the forward direction okay when k1 is much greater than k2 then we'll get this as a distinct peak because b will get accumulated now when k2 is very much greater than k1 as soon as b will is formed it will change into c so we won't get a clear local maxima so basically we would get a graph which is broad at the peak okay so that will peak would be very small okay we just write this expression so this was the main two mathematical derivation that i wanted you to do today okay so they are not part of your je curriculum but anyways because we are going beyond je curriculum and we want to cater to advance also the first eight lectures are basically based on iit je lectures or basically the mains advanced lectures so you can do the solving from the respective books or the dpp problems that has been given to you that will actually help you in understanding the basics okay <clears throat> so now let us do two or three more problems before the end the session for today okay so let me give you a question something like this suppose it has been said to us that okay a reaction is following there is a complex reaction okay now we know that a complex reaction can be written as like its elementary reaction the mechanism can be written by elementary reaction now one of the elementary reactions will be the slowest step so we can write rate according to that equation and then using the steady state approximation if in the rate equation there is some intermediate we can replace that intermediate in terms of the reactant using the steady state approximation concept okay so suppose after doing that we got the value of rate constant as say k1 into k2 upon k3 okay so it means that the overall reaction was having three step one which was having rate constant as k1 other which was having rate constant as k2 and other which was having rate constant as k k3 now question can come okay assume first step has activation energy of ea1 whose rate constant was k1 second step has activation energy of ea2 whose rate constant was k2 third step whose rate constant was k3 has activation energy of ea3 so the question can come find overall find overall activation energy okay so to find the overall activation energy knowing the overall rate constant expression we just have to use the arnes equation so we'll say that arnes equation was k was equal to a into e raised to minus ea by rt so k1 for that step would be a1 let the arnes constant be a1 for that step into e raised to power minus ea1 upon rt okay so we are saying that for this first step whose rate constant corresponds to k1 activation energy is even already given to us and we'll say that the arnes constant is a1 okay into k2 so k2 correspond to second step whose activation energy is ea2 let us assume that its arnes constant is a2 so i can write k2 as a2 into e raised power minus ea2 by rt okay similarly i can write k3 as a3 into e raised power minus ea3 by rt okay now we know that k is the overall rate constant overall arnes equation overall uh, activation energy is ea so we can write k as a which is the overall rate constant into e raised to minus ea by rt i can write this as a1 into a2 upon a3 okay so this i can write e raised to power minus ea1 minus ea2 upon rt and this will go above so we can write this as 
माइनस ई ए वन प्लस ई ए टू माइनस ई ए थ्री विल टेक अ ब्रैकेट ओवर हियर आर टी ओके सो आई कैन राइट दिस एक्सप्रेशन ओके सो आई होप दिस एक्सप्रेशन इज क्लियर टू यू सो इफ आई कंपेयर दिस सो ए विल बी इक्वल टू ए इज द ओवरऑल रेट कॉन्स्टेंट ऑफ द इक्वेशन दैट विल बी इक्वल टू ए वन इन टू ए टू अपॉन ए थ्री ओके सिमिलरली एक्टिवेशन एनर्जी वुड बी इक्वल टू ई ए वन प्लस ई ए टू माइनस ई ए थ्री ओके सो विल बी गिवेन सम वैल्यू यू कैन सॉल्व फॉर द ओवरऑल आरिनियस कॉन्स्टेंट एंड एक्टिवेशन एनर्जी ओके सो जस्ट राइट इट डाउन आई विल गिव वन सिमिलर टाइप ऑफ क्वेश्चन ऑन दिस So basically, what I am doing, I am having the overall rate constant expression. I am using Arrhenius equation for each of the step. K1 corresponds to the first step having activation energy of E A1 and uh, the Arrhenius constant as A1. K2 corresponds to the second step of the reaction that has the activation energy of E A2 and Arrhenius constant as A2. Similarly, K3 corresponds to the rate constant for the third reaction whose activation energy is is E A3 and the over and the arrhenius constant is a3 so i'm just going to apply arrhenius equation to all these rate constant k is the overall rate constant overall arrhenius overall uh, arrhenius constant is a and overall activation energy is ea so i'm just going to write the expression and compare them okay so this way i'm going to get the overall activation energy okay so let me just give you one question so basically suppose we have been given that k1 is k1 into k3 अपॉन के फाइव रेस टू पार हाफ इन टू से के फोर अपॉन के सिक्स और के फोर अपॉन के टू ओके टू इज मिसिंग वर यर सो बेसिकली दिस रिप्रेजेंट्स द रेट कॉन्स्टेंट ओके वी कैन क्लियरली मेक आउट द रेट कॉन्स्टेंट वॉज मेड अप ऑफ लाइक फाइव रेट कॉन्स्टेंट सो वी कैन से दैट द ओवरऑल रिएक्शन वॉज अ कॉम्प्लेक्स रिएक्शन which was made up of five elementary reactions okay now out of those five elementary reaction one would have been the rds we can write the rate according to that rds step okay so in that we'll get some k into concentration of say some of the reactant into say a intermediate so we'll basically applying the steady state concept in the intermediate okay and we are going to derive so finally we'll get a something expression like this into say a raised to power 1 b raised to power 1 so the overall rate constant is this which is a constant so we can replace this with k so if we want to find the overall activation energy for this so simply what i will do is i will say that the overall arrhenius constant for this is a overall activation energy for the overall reaction is ea for k1 i will say that the arrhenius constant is a1 and activation energy is ea1 okay for k3 i am going to say for the step 3 i am going to say the arrhenius constant as ea a3 and activation energy as ea3 similarly for the fifth step i am going to say that the arrhenius constant is a5 into e raised to power minus ea5 upon rt raised to power half for the fourth step i am going to say that arrhenius constant is a4 into e raised to power activation energy let us assume it to be ea4 for the second step arrhenius constant is a2 and the activation energy is ea2 so if you take this inside so i will get root of a1 into a3 upon a5 into a4 upon a2 for the this i can write this as e raised to power minus ea1 upon 2 rt so this is e raised to power ea1 upon 2 rt minus e raised to power ea3 upon 2 rt so if i take it over here so this will be plus ea3 upon 2 rt into e raised to power ea4 minus ea4 rt plus ea2 rt okay so just keep this over here so i can write overall a as 
overall a would be root of a1 into a3 upon a5 into a4 upon a2 okay if you write the overall activation energy so if you just cancel out the negative sign so i will get ea1 by 2 plus ea3 by 2 minus so this is ea5 minus ea5 by 2 okay so this would eventually subtract so this is basically plus ea4 minus ea2 okay so this is the final activation energy so you can derive this the value will be given you can find out the overall activation energy now for this parallel reaction just remember you can also derive this but we are not going to enter into derivation the overall activation energy for this reaction if suppose this reaction has activation energy of ea1 okay suppose the activation energy of the first step is ea1 a changing into b and for the second step a changing into c is ea2 so the overall activation energy i can write as k1 into ea1 plus k2 into ea2 divided by k1 plus k2 I, I can derive this also okay through using the differential equation of our differential form of arrhenius equation okay but i am not going to do it okay yes, you can just do it so you can just remember the formula that will actually help you so this is the basic okay concept so i know the little the lecture might have like just bounced over your head so it was little mathematical i won't call it difficult this is basically a mathematical tool to understand chemical kinetics if you are clear with the expression if you are understanding everything then you have done a very high level content of this chapter so there is nothing left in this chapter to be done at the highest level there were two or more three two or more uh, important uh, mechanisms that we could have done over here but that is not important at this point of time so what we can say is just download the dpv for today and just solve it okay so i hope you are enjoying these lecture so this is so this was basically one of the toughest lecture okay so i hope you have understood it well and hope you have liked the lecture in case you have any problem you can write to us through the chat box so keep learning keep coming to the platform keep posting your doubt take care of your health we are there with you for your preparation of je advance as well as olympiad so this is animesh signing off for now we'll catch tomorrow with a new topic with a very important section of solutions chapter so tomorrow we are going to start solutions and